Good evening. How's everyone doing? Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. This is a pretty cool moment for our program, uh, for career and technical education, our first ever incubator pitch night. Um, so thank you all for joining us for this awesome event. We have three student teams who are looking very forward to sharing the business that they've been working on for the past school year. Um, and I can't wait to get started. My name is Ryan Geary, and I've had the special pleasure of teaching Business Incubator uh, this school year and hosting tonight's event. Business Incubator has been an incredible experience uh, for our students, and I'm really proud of them for the work that they've done this year. It's been a wild ride uh, from transitioning to classroom um, learning, from being at home to back in person full time. It's been an adventure and an uphill battle for all of us. Uh, rest assured, this group of students did not let any barriers get in their way, and they definitely found their entrepreneurial spirit um, through this course. I'm extremely proud of these student teams, as uh, many of, I've seen many of them grow since their freshman year in good old computer tech. Uh, it, it's been a crazy opportunity and an awesome one, and I, I'm super humbled to say that um, I've gotten to know these students very well. Uh, and I'm looking forward to what they have in store for us all in the future. Business Incubator EDU is a class uh, for students to explore their creativity, uh, have an engaging and team-based classroom experience, and this is an opportunity for our students to create something that they can take pride in and leave ZBTHS with. The course has given our students access to some of the best entrepreneurship curriculum that exists, and thanks to our amazing volunteers, access to the best professionals in the industry. From our community and local mentors that routinely worked with our student teams all school year to our coaching experts that came in from all over the country, it was pretty cool. Um, lots of stories about who we were able to have with us in our classes this year, um, even in person and virtually. Uh, we were never shy of giving students the access to the most incredible resources. We are super excited to be able to, to share that we are going to have a new incubator space next year, um, and we're very much looking forward to that. So hopefully I can get that video up and running after the uh, presentations tonight um, and give you guys a sneak peek about what our classes are actually going to look like next year. But before I introduce uh, tonight's teams and our board of advisors, I'd love to give some recognition tonight that um, is well deserved and, and much needed and appreciated because um, we have a lot of amazing individuals that put this night together in this class. Um, so starting off with Superintendent Dr. Jesse Rodriguez, the school board, um, and our Zion Benton administration, thank you uh, for supporting Business Incubator EDU and allowing these students um, this incredible opportunity in career and technical education um, and all the opportunities I bring with it. Thank you very much for your support. Um, Kamosi Construction, thank you for your commitment to our program and for working hard to get our new classroom space up and running. Uh, Mr. Andrew Stout, uh, specifically your support in this school year um, has been second to none. Uh, your hard work to get the Business Incubator EDU course in a place and having to deal with all of my meticulous questions, um, probably weekly, uh, is more appreciated than you know. Your vision for the Career and Technical Education Department uh, and program has been a guiding light for what Incubator is and will grow to be. And I look up to your leadership and passion for our programming, so thank you, appreciate it. The Business Education Department staff, I just wanna recognize they've been extremely supportive as well um, in this new class and encouraging their own uh, students to enroll next year into Business Incubator EDU. Uh, thank you, Robert, Kevin, and Joe for your support this year. To our coaching experts, your knowledge and expertise this year was extremely helpful in teaching these business students about the fields that you all work in. The learning in this class has been much more impactful with you all part of it. And we look forward to a continued partnership, having you come back for years to come. This is quite the list, so bear with me. Very heavy thank you to Jason, Kojo, Ty, Kiana, DJ, Ben, Ron, Rondell, Andy, and Lauren, Kurt, Siola and Tara. Um, we've had some really amazing coaching experts, coaching experts come into our class this year, so thank you to all of you. To our incubator team mentors, mentorship is one of the most important parts of learning in my opinion. And there's so much comfort in having a mentor, especially through this difficult process of learning to start a business. 
Having you all connect with your student teams has made a huge impact on us and our kids, and, and me truly as well. Uh, so thank you to, to Ron, Rondell, Jim, and Natoya. So this is a big one. Um, Erica and Jasmine, Erica Wyman and Jasmine Smith, um, I owe you the most um, out, of, out of anyone here. Um, our ZBTHS Incubator Community Champions. These two wonderful women were the driving force behind all that our program has grown to be this year and um, all the behind the scenes um, stuff that has taken place, you know, the time they have given, the meetings they've held, um, even from the communication um, to and the active recruitment of all the volunteers that we've acquired, uh, the sheer dedication that they've given to this program is a debt that I definitely cannot repay. I'm extremely humble and proud to work with Erica and Jasmine as the experience our students have had this year wouldn't have been possible without them. Erica and Jasmine are both ZBTHS alumni, and I remember when we met initially to plan the course and go through what kind of volunteers we wanted um, and what our expectations were for this school year. Uh, I, I think back to our main goal, uh, our main goals of being able to provide our, our students uh, with access to um, with access um, to the quality entrepreneurship curriculum that they deserve and opportunities to meet and network with business professionals in the industry, and also to have something that they can take away from in this experience. To that I say, look at what we've done here in our first year. Um, it's wonderful to be here tonight having our first pitch night, and I can't wait to see and show you what some of our students have produced. Eric and Jasmine, thank you so much. Uh, finally, I'd like to give credit as well to Margarita Gillespie, uh, who's here tonight with us, and her team at Uncharted Learning. Um, Uncharted Learning has supplied ZBTHS with training, curriculum, professional development uh, that allows not only the students to grow in this work, but um, me as their teacher as well. Uh, I'm grateful for uh, the partnership that we've been able to form this year and for our future experiences that we can provide to ZBTHS students. Thank you. Yeah, All righty. I am excited to announce tonight our board of advisors. Um, you may have noticed a gentleman sitting over to my right. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing what their role is going to be here tonight. Um, so their role as a board of advisors is for these gentlemen to listen to our students' pitches and give them some feedback about their business idea and the pitch itself. Um, after each team's presentation, uh, the board's going to have an opportunity to ask each team some questions uh, to further inquire about aspects of the business and learn a bit, uh, a bit more about the business if, if they can. Uh, we have a great group of advisors tonight, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. First, I'd like to introduce to you Philip Will. I'm going to give him a wave, Phil. Perfect. Uh, Philip is the current Vice President of Finance for RR Donnelly. RRD is a leading global provider of multi-channel business communication services and marketing solutions. Philip began his career as an accounting specialist 30 years ago with more business forms in Charleston, Illinois. He has worked in multiple locations, including Lake Forest, Illinois, Iowa City, Iowa, Logan, Utah, and Bernie Burn, Illinois. And has continued to work with his corporation through transitions from more business forms to more Wallace, and then now to R.R. Donnelly. During his time, Philip has held uh, positions of finance manager, plant controller, and director of finance. Philip's a graduate of Purdue University with a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and has a CPA designation. Philip and his wife, Deborah, who many of you may know, have a daughter, Jordan, who recently graduated from the University of Iowa in graphic design. In his spare time, Philip enjoys a lot of things, including boating, kayaking, skiing, golfing, nature, watching football, and basketball, followed also by IndyCar racing. Love that. Interesting fact, Philip has been skydiving four times, and I've actually been skydiving once myself, so awesome. Philip's excited to be here tonight to participate in our event. Next, I'd like to introduce Stephen Bug. Stephen was appointed president and CEO of Great Lakes Credit Union in 2018. Stephen graduated uh, from the University of Evansville with a Bachelor's of Business Administration and Marketing. He's also a graduate of the ProCon Leadership Institute for Cooperatives, focusing on the development of CEOs and holds a real estate license in the state of Indiana. Mr. Buggett has been and continues to be actively involved in serving uh, as a volunteer for many local nonprofit boards and leadership 
uh, capacities, including currently serving on the Lake County Community Foundation's Board of Directors as their board chairman, as their board chairman. In addition, Stephen uh, has his, uh, his wife, Stephen and his wife, Kathy, are both co-chairs of the United Way of Lake County's ninth annual premier leaders event. He was recently appointed to the Waukegan Public Library Board by the mayor of Waukegan. Stephen also volunteers his time in the credit union industry and currently serves on the NAFCU Legislative Committee and is a board member of the credit union centers. He also serves on the State of Illinois Bank on Illinois Financial Products Subcommittee and the Illinois Credit Union, Legis uh, credit union League Legislative Affairs Committee. You sound pretty busy, my guy. <laughs> Welcome, Stephen. Appreciate you being here. Um, last, we would introduce Philip Seeger. We have two Phils tonight. Philip Seeger. Uh, Philip has been a director of MedCorp and is the current president and CEO uh, since he founded the company in 1984. Philip is a pioneer in developing health navigation and other clinical services, sorry, other innovative clinical services, including telephonic injury triage and adaptive on-site health clinics. These services use evidence-based medicine and technology to improve care and reduce costs uh, while also improving outcomes. Under Philip's direction, MedCorp has grown from a startup company to an international corporation employing over 1,000 people in four different countries and operating in more than 230 on-site clinics and providing injury triage services to over 250,000 work sites. Philip has multiple US, pan uh, US patents for his work in healthcare decision support technology and has positioned MedCorp as a leader in healthcare transparency and conflict-free uh, fee structures. In addition to MedCorp, Philip helped start six successful businesses, three of which he uh, sold to Fortune 500 companies, and he still remains active with the other three. He's also a director of NRI Incorporated, American Escrow and Closing Company, and MedCorp subsidiaries, iConnect, and MedCorp Canada. Philip was a partner of Crowburn Management Partnership, a healthcare management and investment firm which holds investments in several healthcare startups. Philip has held certifications as a nationally registered paramedic and an underwater rescue and recovery diver. In addition to his business interests, Philip has served as a volunteer in the Emergency Medical Services, Mobile Intensive Care Committee for the Chicago Hospital Council, Barrington Fire Protection District Board, and served on the Foundation Board of Directors of the San Diego Zoo Global. Thank you for coming tonight, gentlemen. Let's give a round of applause for our board of directors. So let's get into it. Here is how tonight is going to work. So we have three teams tonight, um, and the order of our pitches has been determined in class. Um, each team is going to have a cap of 10 minutes to perform their pitch tonight. Um, if they don't have to use all 10 minutes, but they're able to. After each pitch, the board is going to have an opportunity to ask them a few questions to get to a little bit know uh, to get to know their team a little bit more. Um, and specifically in the four categories, um, they're going to be trying to make some determinations about their pitch, uh, their business overview. Uh, this is going to include uh, being able to clearly articulate the problem that they are trying to solve and the solution they've come up with, their customer segments, their competition, and their unique value proposition. Otherwise, what makes them unique as a business. Next, they're also going to talk about their investment highlights, um, including their total addressable market, their, spe their specific addressable market, um, and any results that they have to share from their minimum viable product testing and experiments that they went through, as well as their revenue growth projections. Third, they're going to go through the required capital that's going to be required to actually start the business, um, including um, startup costs, operating costs, cost of goods sold, um, and they're also going to have an opportunity to display their pricing and how they model that. Lastly, they're going to be looking at their professionalism tonight, which will include um, basically that they have a credible presentation and professional pitch. Okay. Um, once all the teams have presented, there will be a short break. We're going to go ahead and we're going to have a quick chat and, and deliberate about how the pitches went. Um, and then we're going to bring everybody back up on stage, take some photos, celebrate, and we will announce the winners. So tonight's teams, we have um, first tonight going um, College Courtesy, followed by Sneaker Space, and followed lastly by Passion Bubble. All righty. All righty. I am very 
excited to announce our first team that's going to go ahead and pitch tonight. Um, if Aaliyah could join me on stage. Alrighty, presenting tonight is junior Aaliyah Burry for her company that is driven to supporting prospective college students. Finding the right college can be a challenge in today's world as students need to consider a variety of factors like cost, location, educational opportunities, and more. College courtesy eliminates the barriers that may come up and makes the process of searching for schools fun, engaging, and enjoyable. Her co-founder, Ajani Crenshaw, um, couldn't be here tonight due to a track meet. We love, love our athletes, but um, Ajani's rooting for her um, as she pitches tonight, and I present to you, Aaliyah Burry. When I first came to business incubator class, Mr. Geary said, find a problem. Find a problem a group of people struggle with and how can you be the solution? And to be honest, my first thought was, I don't even know how to do this. But my business partner, Johnny Crenshaw, was looking for colleges. He wanted to find all his college interests into one college. But there's about 5,300 colleges in the US alone. And he didn't know where to start. Hi, my name is Aaliyah Burry. I'm 17 years old, and this is College Courtesy. College Courtesy is an online business driven to support high school students. College can be hard when finding location, cost, and learning opportunities. With College Courtesy, it cuts, it cuts the barriers and makes it fun, engaging, and enjoyable. The CC platform partners with school districts that has a license and boom, just like that, the students are able to log in and gain access at any moment, any time. And then they can see informational things and authentic reviews, personal videos, and other college media. Our target market is mostly school districts, but who the, the, the app that we're gonna, be, the website that are using our stuff is going to be ages 20, 15 through 19. And for the people that also are out of college can also gain access to it, and that's gonna be ages through 21 through 30, that's our estimate. And then our competitive points, how are we different, or how are we different from others, other colleges and other websites like that? It's, it's easy to use, and we have authentic information in real college students that are, that use our platform to help the college and help the reviews. A three package plan is basically our pricing and high school students that, high school sizing that is about 2,500 or less will get charged 25 per year. And the high school that is more than 2,500 will get charged about 3,450. And the college marketing advertising, and that's to have the college onto our business and our website, and they will only get charged $1,000 to get market. And then our expenses, what we will be spending will be about four fifty dollars per school, or $90,000 per year. And if that's what we're gonna be using, we're gonna to charge, what we're gonna be spending, I'm sorry, it's cost to obtain student-generated media account registration and website updates and media storage. So who are we going to reach? So our, our basically what we're going to, we want it to be worldwide, but we're gonna start with Illinois. And our available market is gonna be 3.8 million, but for the whole US, it's gonna be about 83 million. And then our market share is gonna be 15%, and we estimated at about 9,200. Our three-year growth for our second year is gonna be 9,6700 with a 5% growth. And over, for our year three, will be over 1 million with our 10% growth. And our startup cost is mainly gonna be of um, administrative and marketing costs. And that's for putting ourselves out there, ads, Snapchat ads, anything to get ourselves out there. And for our administrative, that's for upkeep for the website, website design. 
and that is college courtesy. <laughs> process came along. I thought I fell in love with my university uh, at Illinois State, but I wish definitely that I had some sort of platform where um, I could have seen the inside of dorms and the college life, the college experience. So I think it's a great, great idea, great concept. Thank you, Aaliyah. All right, moving right along to our second pitch tonight for the evening. We have sneaker space I'd like to invite up onto the stage. Let me go ahead and introduce Sneaker Space. Tonight will we be presented uh, by Ezekiel Brown and Hector Cruz. Sneaker Space is a company that aims to lessen the financial burden of high value shoes while also providing the access to attain these scarce products. Since the companies only make a select number of shoes, they often sell very quickly. Through the Sneaker Space business model of obtaining the shoes directly from manufacturers and utilizing technology that quickly is able to buy the shoes online, we are able to supply more of these desired shoes for a discount to our members. Sneaker Space is one of a kind online sneaker store that will revolutionize the way that people are able to access both high value sneakers and the street sneaker culture. I present to you tonight, Sneaker Space. Sneakers, all, all types of sneakers, and is willing to do essentially anything to get them. These could be whether purchasing them on websites or anything like that, because there's a whole community surrounded around this. However, we are going to show you a problem that these uh, sneaker heads have to go through on a daily basis. Yo, dude, those are some nice kicks. Did you get them when they dropped? No, I didn't get them when they dropped, but it's impossible. Really? Then you must have had to pay $600 for them. No, actually, I only paid about like. 480? 480? Yeah. Where? Uh, there's this website that I found actually, it's called Sneaker Space. There's this website, you go, there's a subscription based model and you can either choose uh, to get one month, three months, or a full year of subscribing and then you get access to all their collection of this kind of shoes. Really? You gotta yeah. sign me up for it. I got you. Yeah. Come over to my imaginary combo group here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That easy? Yup. No way. Now you can look fresh like Mr. Gary. Yes, sir. <laughs> and with that, we introduce Sneaker Space. Hi, I'm Easy Gil Brown. And I'm Hector Cruz. And that was a problem that Sneakerheads. Uh, this is a problem that sneakerheads uh, generally go through. We can't get access to the sneakers that we want to get access to, either through resellers using bots and uh, taking up all the product right when they drop, which is at the retail price, and then upselling it for uh, hundreds of dollars uh, more than what people can afford. And as you can see from the memes on the screen, there is uh, lots of uh, culture going around not being able to afford the shoes. So our solution is Sneaker Space. Sneaker Space is a subscription-based model pro, uh, website that has to do with us essentially making a subscription for any, all the sneakerheads to be able to purchase and obtain a whole catalog of sneakers. These prices range from $15 a month, $30 for three months, and $60 for a whole year. $60 for a whole year is equivalent to $5 a month, and since it's so low for the price and it offers a wide variety of sneakers, we're able to offer various sneakers to all the sneakerheads that would like them for a lower price. Our current competition that we have is StockX and Gold. StockX and Gold are your generic reseller websites where you get these resellers that use sneaker bots to 
uh, obtain the shoes before your average person like me or Hector could get access to them. And then that's where they sell them for much higher prices. So like these, for example, as I was telling you earlier, I got these for $60. Now if you go on their website, they're ranging anywhere from like $360 to $600, depending on your size, so that's a huge difference. What makes us unique, we at Sneaker Space run on a AAA system. This AAA system is accessibility, affordability, and authenticity. We don't like to go around selling fake sneakers and we want to make them as affordable as possible. So as we stated from our website, we will be able to allow people to browse through a wide variety of uh, sneakers for the simple price of, of a subscription. And the way that we verify that these shoes are authentic is that we purchase them directly from the manufacturers such as Nike or Jordan, and, or even Adidas if you want to purchase some Yeezys. And basically we use the process of sneaker bots. Sneaker bots essentially go in and purchase the website and act as a human and use residential proxy servers. These resident, residential proxy servers have to deal with using different IP addresses. These different IP addresses make it look like various people are purchasing the shoe. However, it's merely us. And this allows us to get a wide variety of shoes and allow them to distribute them upon various sneakers. Uh, for our customer segments, our customer segments we're going to be wanting to target are ages 15 to 25 and 29 to 35. Uh, as we start up, we're going to want to be mainly focusing on age groups 15 to 25, and that's because they're most accessible to us because it's around our age and we're most familiar with that group. Also because based off of our uh, competitors' profits, over it was 62% of their profits were made merely from the age uh, groups of 15 to 25, so it's the largest uh, prominent uh, uh, age group that are involved in the sneaker uh, space. So, uh, this is our customer segment validation. We actually went out and did surveys around the school of uh, various people that are interested in the sneakers. And the graph on the left is out of the 83 people that we asked, all, all of them were uh, immediately interested in purchasing our membership. And then as you can see on the right, that's the membership that people are interested in. Uh, the platinum one, which is this uh, full year one for the equivalency of $5 a month is the most popular because you save the most money. And that's best for us because we keep our customers hooked for longer and then we're able to uh, expose them more to our, uh, our collection. And then also something that we have on our website that we actually recently developed and we have going. It's not live yet because we don't have our uh, products, but we have a website developed. You're able to go in and communicate with other senior heads and there's a whole, there's a whole forum in their community behind it instead of just having a So for our year one revenue, we're projected to be around $581,000. And um, most of that is gonna be coming from our revenue cost based off of the sneakers. And then a smaller portion of it will be made from our subscription. And then we see a 43% increase in the second year and a 51 increase in the third year. And we believe that that's possible because as time goes on, sneakers raise in value, which leads to higher prices and more profit that we're able to make. And then especially with us being able to uh, better market to our audience and then have a larger community of people that are able to advertise for us basically for free just by being involved in the community, that that's possible. So our cost of goods sold. This is the, um, as you can see, it says different tiers of shoes. These different tiers of shoes are actually the different retail prices that your typical sneaker will be at. So for the first one, is $110 for us to actually purchase a tier one shoe, and it will be $9.60 for shipping. So with other companies, uh, such as our competitors, such as Go and StockX, they will make these uh, um, $110 shoes actually cost $250, $300, even $600 at times. However, due to us getting them directly from the source for $110, we can charge maybe even $200 or $180 for anyone to get the shoes. So as we continue through the different tiers of shoes. Hello? Hello? As I stated, for the different um, retail prices, it increases $110, $175, $225, and $275. Throughout all these tiers of shoes, the shipping consistently stays the same, and we'll still be able to allow various customers to get them for an affordable price. And as he said, we're able to market it to them as a, at a more affordable price because we're the only business out on, there's no business out on the market right now that offer a subscription-based platform for a sneaker uh, e-commerce website, so they're not able to 
offer it at, at that low of a price, but then also because they're hungry for profit. Obviously, profit is important, but we believe that it's more important to give uh, access to more variety of people. And then as we give access to more variety of people, we're able to still generate the same amount of income as other competitive, competitive companies. Our setup costs that we have is a majority just a startup inventory, so that's getting access to the shoes that we're going to be able to sell and market to the customers that we're going to be having. Then we also have marketing costs, plant property and equipment, and administrative costs. So plant property and equipment that can be anything from uh, having a storage facility or, or a warehouse to be able to store our shoes at, um, or, or our sneaker box that we're going to be purchasing that we're able to um, attain the shoes actually. And then administrative costs, which can be anything from legal costs to um, uh, website development and things such as that. And then uh, this is our SGNA, which is going to be recurring costs after a startup, which is going to be made up of the marketing costs and administrative costs, as you can see. A uh, large portion of it is going to be dedicated to marketing costs, but not as much as you think, because we have found ways through social media and, uh, way, and ways that are more connected to the youth of our targeted customer segment that we're able to buy uh, marketing positions or, or ads on different companies for a more affordable price to be able to market it. So this is our market sizing. Believe it or not, the, actual, the sneaker market generated $2 billion in 2019, and it's estimated to make up to $30 billion by the year 2030. Our total addressable market, or TAM, is $2 billion, as I stated. Our serviceable addressable market is $400, billion, uh, $400 million. This is the specific market of the 15 to 25 year olds and the 25 to 30 year olds. They were gonna be specifically selling our shoes for and our serviceable obtainable market for year one will be $581,000 for $152. This is 0.15% of the $400 million at SAM. And even though this 0.15% may seem low, for the first year of a sneaker platform to actually be in the market, that's uh, we consider it to be very good. And as time goes on, we'll be able to develop that number and considerably make large amounts of profit. So this is going to be our three-year seven uh, revenue. As I stated earlier, with our uh, raises, our increase in uh, revenue over the course of the year. So the blue bar is going to be our total revenue, uh, so our gross revenue, and then the silver bar is going to be our gross profit. So that's the amount that our company is going to be making minus cost of goods sold and. Uh, and cost to our company, and then the green bar is gonna be actually what we're gonna be taking in minus taxes and other fees that might be incurred. So with that, we would like to say thank you for actually listening to our pitch and taking the time to actually be here with us. And also, we hope that you guys help us on our journey in order to let sneakerheads obtain the shoes that they want for a more affordable price and get all the authentic sneakers that they need. time up here for a sneaker space. You know, I'm going to say they're taking a jab at me when they say, you know, trying to look as good as Mr. Geary, because if anyone knows me who works here, I wear dress shoes or I wear boat shoes. Um, so, I guess I definitely need to increase my, uh, my sneaker game. All right, last but not least, I would love and I'm proud to introduce our, our third team here with Passion Bubble, Nani, who joined me on stage. All right, presenting tonight for Passion Bubble is sophomore Nadia Edelstein. Passion Bubble's mission is to help people find their passions and hobbies while doing that, also being able to promote small and local businesses. At its core, Passion Bubble helps promote small businesses and as a result is able to connect residents with their community, instill a passion for developing hobbies, and help people find joy in doing activities again. I present to you Passion Bubble. So 
I took that topic quite literally and I helped it to develop a business that helps people find their passions and hobbies. Our three main problems when developing our business for the Carmen Sada de Pico Sangro were the lack of people with hobbies and passions, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the need for promotion of local and small businesses. So especially with the surge of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people's mental health went down with them being stuck inside as much. And studies have shown that six in 10 Americans look for hobbies and passions during the surge of COVID-19 and the time staying inside. So our solution was to build an online pl platform that helps to promote small and local businesses and helps people discover their hobbies and where to find places to do them at. So why passion level? We help to create a sense of belonging within communities. We help people to build healthier lifestyles through passions and hobbies, as they do help with mental health and clearing your mind and body. So we help to create a sense of community and belonging, and we also help to market for small businesses. So small businesses, especially with COVID-19, desperately need promotion, and it's really hard to find those places and for small businesses to get promotion. So we help with local and small businesses that are open. Our total addressable market is 1.4 billion. So that's the total amount of people that go for community events and engage in hobbies within the US. Our serviceable addressable market is 30, 369 million, which is also our projected revenue in the Midwest by our figure. And our market share is 64,360, which does seem like a low number, but it's because as um, I knew more to actually start the business of Passion Bubble, so I wanted to go for something that I knew I could reach and that I don't mind increasing the number, but I wanted to start with something that I knew that I could achieve for our first year of revenue. So the way that we're about to look, we have two financial models at Passion Bubble. So for our first month of partnering with businesses for promoting them, we're going to have a transaction-based model where we take 10 to 13% of the transaction between our customer and the business. And then after that, they can switch to one of four plans, which is our monthly plan, which is $180 for month to month pay, $459 for a quarterly, a quarterly plan, which you save 15% in, $869 for a semi-annual plan, which the business saves 20% on, and $1,620 for a yearly plan, so the business would save 25% overall. And we plan to market the businesses by internet marketing, weekly social media posts, printed brochures, and access to email lists. So an example of this would be a business that we actually were able to partner with, Serenity and Life Fitness. So let's say we go and we would print pr brochures for them and put them at the local library. They dine by the library. Or we'd send out emails, ask her try to um, partner with local school programs to get her business out there. So our predicted growth for year one is 64,360 year two, 139,530, and for year three, 256,726. So our target market is people over 60, 20%, because within the dying community, we actually have a um, elderly home. So we really wanted to target them and help them to get in the community and get engaged with the community and help them to create a sense of belonging getting back in touch with their passions and hobbies. 75% of people 30 through 60, because it is important to have a balanced life with work and have passions while you are working. And under 35%, because teens and kids also look for senses of belonging within their communities. So for our business, we're going for 80% small and local businesses in the county, which means um, one of the businesses that we have partnered with already is Serenity Life Fitness, which is actually based on Zoom as of the moment since the COVID-19 pandemic but their studio is located in Gurney, and 20% local and business, local and small businesses in Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. And this number actually came from when we did our test to see if people would be interested in our business and lots of people in the area of DeKalb that went to NIU actually said that they would be interested and that they, would, they wouldn't know where to look if they were interested in getting a hobby. So that's where we handed out our surveys to. Our direct competitors are Martin Agency, as they do a bit of the same thing that we do, but without the census community and without it being as direct. And our indirect competitors are online hobby places and basic promotional tactics. So at Passion Bubble, our company overview is we partner with communities and businesses in need of growth. We create belonging and sense of community. We market their businesses and we engage in prospective customers. So this is actually the QR code for our current business that we have a partner. 
keep expanding in my fitness. And we plan to start sending out Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, and posting brochures at the local Zion Brennan Library and Waukegan Libraries to print out for business. And this is a QR code to her website if you'd like to scan it. Thank you. businesses I think is definitely under um, represented as far as what it means to have a small business and be able to market it productively in, in today's world especially digitally that's a big challenge so I, I commend the, the concept and I, and I love the idea thank you Nadia all right so we I gotta take a break all right um, feel free to go ahead and stand up stretch your legs I want to thank the teams one more time let's give one more round of applause for our three teams tonight it's been awesome. So we are going to take a break so that we can go ahead and have some conversations about how we're going to be doing the judging tonight. So feel free to stretch your legs, use the restroom, there should be some waters, and there is a lot of pizza that I am going to bet is uneaten. If you would like to indulge in some of that, feel free. Um, but thank you, we should be about 10 minutes, okay? Thank you. So let's get this going here. Um, I would like to, first and foremost, I'm actually gonna bring all of my student teams back on stage. So if all four of my students could join me. So I'd like to say a few things, maybe off script if you will, but um, for those of you who don't know, uh, our class actually has 22 students in it. And we have four here tonight, and I just want to say how much I appreciate the, the dedication, um, the bravery it takes to get up here and do something like this. You know, we had some really good conversation back when the Board of Advisors and myself um, and Mark Reader, we all talked. and. It takes a lot to get up here, right? It, it really does. This is a unique experience for our students, and I just want to do one more round of applause for all of our students here tonight. It's an absolutely project. It's awesome, and I'm just very proud uh, to be able to be here today uh, with these four individuals. They did a great job. So we are going to go ahead and um, announce some winners here. I'd like to maybe pause and, and take a second to um, ask any of our board um, to maybe say a few words. Uh, we had some great conversations about all three teams tonight, so I'm going to turn it over really quickly to, to say some final words here from our board of advisors. Well, first off, there's that two second delay, right? Yep. First off, you all did a, an incredible job, <clears throat> and I want to leave you with this. You're going to be told no a lot. You're going to be told it won't work, you can't do it, you got to not listen to any of that, okay? Uh, a little known fact, Elon Musk was 24 hours away from bankruptcy at Tesla. Had to pick up the phone and call Sergey Brin, one of the founders of Google, and borrow $40 million to keep the company alive. Most of the investors don't know that, very few people know that. <clears throat> but every one of these entrepreneurs have incredible stories, and they are told over and over again that they're gonna fail. So it's all about believing in yourselves. And as Ryan said, just getting up here tonight and presenting your idea took a lot, a lot of guts. You did a great job. <clears throat> You're gonna need that going forward. So don't lose it, okay? You gotta believe in yourself first and foremost. And if you do, good things will happen. And don't take no for an answer, okay? Great advice, I don't know what to say after that, right? But uh, as Ryan said, for you all to get up here tonight to present in front of everybody in the audience, the way you vetted through all of the opportunities that you discussed, congratulations, great job, and you should be very, very proud of what you've accomplished, and how amazing to take this experience 
as part of your life journey going forward and use it to your advantage each and every day. But congratulations, great job. And I look forward to Ryan telling us what happens to each of you in the future as you continue down that journey. So again, congratulations and thanks. Yeah, I will echo that. I just enjoyed seeing the enthusiasm for, for business, you know, for, for the, the projects and the, the ideas that you had. I think that, that was just incredible. Um, you know, getting in front of an audience uh, is, is always going to be nervous. And, you know, the more you do it, the, the easier it gets. Uh, you know, the one thing I always keep in my mind is, is separation is in the preparation and you guys prepare well and uh, I have no doubt uh, if you continue to do that, uh, good things are going to happen. But uh, thank you. It was, it was great. Thank you. I do have one machine. So you're going to give us all a pair of the sneakers, right, that you have on, right? Do we get a discount, right? <laughs> On each of your services, we get a discount, right, if we sign up? Back to you, Ryan. Tell them, show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for your kind words. Uh, we are gonna do, um, just a quick thing before we announce the winners, I'd like to present um, with the board, if you guys don't mind doing this with me as well. Um, we have some certificates for completing tonight's pitch night that we'd like to do some quick photos with really quickly before we announce the winners. Um, so I'm going to have actually everyone kind of come over this way for me and we'll do by team. We'll do a quick photo in front of the screen and then you guys will stay up here and then we're going to announce the winners and some fun news. So I'm going to have to get Paul come over this way, Ezekiel and Hector stay out there. I would like to present to you um, Hector Cruz and Ezekiel Brown um, a certificate of completion here for successfully completing Business Incubator EDU and pitching at Pitch Night 2022. Certificate of Accomplishment and Completion for Nadia Edelstein for successfully completing Business Incubator EDU and Pitching at Pitch Night 2022. successfully completing Business Incubator EDU 2022 and pitching here tonight at Pitch Night. Thank you. tonight, um, Ms. Deborah Will and Richard Frierson here with the Zion Benton uh, Coalition for Healthy Communities here to help me present tonight's winners. Let's give them a round of applause for me. Good 
news is they're not here because they're being loaded with the full Microsoft suite. Gary has a surprise, uh, additional prize for uh, our top winner tonight. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. We are very appreciative of the donation for these laptops. I hope you guys are able to use them for your future business endeavors, for school. Um, they're going to be awesome, and we're really excited to present those to you guys. Uh, we did have uh, one more item here, and this is going to go to our winning team. Now, I just want to emphasize here for this winning team um, and all of my teams that there was a lot of conversation that happened back there, and I was really happy to be a part of it. Um, there were so many good things that to come from these pitches tonight. Um, so I just want to say, once again, how proud I am uh, of all four of you for getting up here, for, for killing it. Um, it was a great experience for myself for the board, uh, for our audience tonight. So one more quick round of applause, we're gonna announce. A lot of round of applause. A lot of reasons for it. So the winning team tonight, walking away with not only a laptop, but a wishful donation was, was made um, for the winner for pitch night tonight for a cash prize of $200 that they're gonna be walking away with tonight. Give it up one more time for Sneaker Space. Once again, thank you to all my lovely contestants tonight. Uh, my student teams, you guys are amazing. I hope you guys enjoy uh, what is to come for you. You all have bright futures ahead of you. For my seniors, congratulations on your accomplishment this year. Um, and I look forward to my, my sophomore and junior to having you at some point again, hopefully in the near future, maybe next year. That'd be awesome. Come back and see me. Thank you, everybody, tonight for a great night. Uh, we're going to stick around and do some photos quick. Like Mr. Brown would like to say something here. Uh, I just wanted to say that I just wanted to say thank you to all the people that were involved in this. For Miss Will and the coalition for their donation and even helping us with resources, being able to put together our posters and stuff like that. To Mr. Geary actually teaching the course and sticking with us through all the hardships. And especially all those times when the Zoom calls were stuff that's going straight over our heads. <laughs> uh, and then Mr. Stout who provided us, uh, Mr. Geary with lots of help and resources that we are used to. Uh, further our businesses, and then all of our mentors, not even just our personal one, Ron, but all of the ones uh, that came together and helped us in the end. So I just want to say thank you to them, and then the board that at the end came and heard us out. So thank you. Well, this is going to conclude our first annual pitch night. We're going to stick around up here for some photos. So family, friends, if you guys like to come on stage and take some photos with our student teams, feel free. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Have a good night. We have one more announcement. Um, I want to say thank you to Mr. Mack because he really helped me um, be confident in what I have to say. And he just really helped me. He was a really good mentor for everything. And Mr. Gary was really good too. He's like, dude, dude, let's do it. He, yeah, we should. Give him, you should give him a raise too. <laughs>